Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen and amen. Oh, for a thousand come to sing. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come today on this Pentecost Sunday to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, Lord, as we worship you, may you be blessed by our worship, Father. And, Lord, revive our hearts, revive our spirits, that, Father, we may grow closer to you and be more equipped to share the gospel of Christ to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's an honor to be here today, Father, and we ask now that you hear our personal private prayers. And now, Father, hear us as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is taken from the book of Acts, the second chapter, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language uh, being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, 
are all these who who are speaking Galileans, then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. <clears throat> Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they had had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billars of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of the wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices and my body will also rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that that patriarch David died and was buried. His tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what is to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of death, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promise, Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children and for all are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. All those who know that this is the word of God, say amen. Amen, amen and amen. 
our prayer list is printed in the bulletin. If you will t- turn with me, it's past the center. Um, <clears throat> just like to highlight um, some of our uh, names and concerns. Um, we're happy that uh, Gail Roberts is home, and so uh, she, she's uh, being strengthened, and we're, we rejoice with the Roberts family and with Hal that she she's home. I think it's been about six weeks or seven weeks. Um, Linda Estelo will be having surgery uh, this coming week, so we want to remember her in our prayers. Uh, Manny Pouquet is recovering from almost like a double surgery, so um, he's recovering, so we want to continue to pray for him. Herman Olivero is having some more extensive testing this week, so we want to remember him in the testing process. <coughs> Um, uh, Pat Paglione, I talked to her family this week, and um, she needs our prayers. She's uh, she's just very sick, so we need to be praying for Pat Pag- Paglione. Um, Jim Cunningham is still in St. Mary's, recovering uh, from uh, he fell again and broke a couple ribs and some of the Jim's just a mess lately so just pray for every part of Jim's body that you you can think of and uh, also so Jim if you're watching hi and also pray for Sandy that's back there recovering and do, doing what she has to do Jim Lowry is recovering we're still praying for him um, Frank Lanhart uh, we're we're praying for him also we've added and of course, we want to continue. If I don't mention their names, it's just because of time. Um, Hugh, Hugh Campbell, oh, the Campbells aren't here, are they? We want to continue to remember Hugh in our prayers and also, also Albert. And then we've added Elaine Burr's uh, son, um, Lenny, to our prayer list, just some health concerns, so we want to remember him in our prayers. Friend of Beverly Dye Carmen, we've also added uh, to the prayer list. And. Uh, <clears throat> We do want to uh, welcome back Nancy Benuto, sitting right there. And maybe you can share with us a little later uh, how, how you're coming along. And um, I think that's the update. Remember, if you want anyone on the prayer list, just call the church office. Try to have it, the information in the office by Wednesday uh, so we can type it up. And then uh, we leave someone on the prayer list for a few weeks unless we hear from you otherwise. Um, so we, we uh, uh, try to get your every need there. And uh, so and then some of our church members with special concerns, we have the second category. And then after you've uh, lost a, a mate, a parent or child, we usually try to keep you in the loss of loved ones for about five months. So we know that it's still a rough time, you know, afterwards. So... That's our prayer concerns for for this morning. And our prayer chorus is Spirit of the Living God.
gracious Heavenly Father, it is good to be here. It's good to be in this place with, with family and friends and friends that are as close as family to us. Father, it's good to come here today to worship you. And so, Lord, that's exactly what we do. And, Father, if we couldn't make it in the church today, for those of us that are at home or in some other location, Father, we're thankful for your presence there also. Because, Lord, we know that there's nowhere we can go where you aren't ever really present. But, Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. Father, we confess our sin. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And, Lord, no matter how perfect we sometimes think we are, we're not. But, Lord, we're thankful that when we come to you and confess our sins, that you are faithful and just, and you do forgive us. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful for that. Lord, we come today to worship not out of condemnation or guilt, but we come because we know that we are forgiven people because of the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary and because of Christ's resurrection from the dead. And so, Father, we are grateful <clears throat> that we can celebrate in our forgiveness. We're grateful that we can celebrate in our future home, uh, knowing that when life is over here on earth, that there are mansions being prepared for us right now for our arrival. <clears throat> Lord, we want to thank you for your many blessings. You provide us with our necessities. You provide us with extra things. You just keep providing and taking care of us, and we're thankful for that. And, Lord, we're not only thankful for the material things of life, but, Father, we're thankful for, for friendships, for the body of believers. We're, we're thankful so much for um, the health care that we have. We're so thankful, Father, um, that that we live in a relatively free land and we can worship as we please. Father, we do continue, though, to pray for America. We continue to pray for our country. We continue to pray for our, our political system. We continue to pray, Father, that ultimately revival would come to this land, that you would bring us back to, to where we once were, Father. And, even more committed to the cause of Christ. But Father, uh, we're going through rough times right now and use us in any way that you can to help us to bring peace to our country. We pray, Father, for the peace of Israel. We pray, Lord, that you would intervene in a powerful way. And Lord, you hate us, we hate us. It's, it's a horrible thing, but Father, terrorism is so evil and Lord when that starts ramping up we have a problem and so Lord just be with Israel bring them ultimately peace during these turbulent times and so Father we are grateful and thankful for who you are what you've done for us and what you're going to continue to do and Lord we want to be a part of your great and wonderful plan Father, we come on behalf of, of those who have been in some health problems. We're thankful that Gail is home. We pray that you would continue to strengthen her. We pray for Linda. She has surgery this week that your hand would be upon her and that you would give her peace as she prepares for it. We pray for Manny that you would help him in his recovery from his surgeries. We pray that he would get back on his feet again. We pray for Herman that the testing would turn out okay and that you would be with him in his pain. Father, we pray for uh, Pat, Lord, that you would be with her and bring healing to her body. We pray for Jim Cunningham that you would bless him and heal him and bring him home safely and well. We pray for Jim Lowry that you would also help him in his time of need. And, and Lord, we pray for Frank and Hugh and Albert, that you would bless them. 
Lord, we pray for Lenny that wherever he is right now, he would feel your special touch upon his life. Be with Carmen and bring healing in that situation. We thank you for being with Nancy and in her recovery, and we pray that you would continue to be with her in her uh, time of need. And so, Lord, we give you um, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, Father, for it's in Christ's name that we pray and his people said, Amen and amen. Praise the Lord this morning. How many want to see a move of God's spirit? Amen. Do you want to see a move of God's spirit? Hallelujah. Lord, we cry out for a move of your spirit. We want you, Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you as never before. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down. Come on. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, Holy Ghost, come on down. Lord, we're your children, and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power, just like the prophets who said it would be. In the last days and outpouring we'd see Our hearts are waiting, we're anticipating Lord, won't you send your Holy Ghost down Send it on down, come on Send it on down Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down Send it on down, send it on down Lord hear our call let your Holy Spirit fall send down the fire let it fall like rain as we lift our praises to your name send it on down send it on down Lord let the Holy Ghost come on down send it on Send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Heavenly Father, won't you hear our call? We need to let your Holy Spirit fall. Send down the power, let it fall like rain as we lift our praises to your name. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit fall.
Let your Holy Spirit fall. Fill this place, Lord, with us all. Let your mercy and your grace for all our sin. We need a special touch from you. Send us anointing that is fresh and new. Pour your power on our hungry hearts and fill us up again. Uh, son of God, fold your <laughs> Oh, let the Son of God enfold you. With the Spirit and His love, let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and the Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you.
we do welcome you here today. It's good to have so many of you starting to come back and, and to look alive. Um, we'd like to, we're slowly trying to get back into the, some of the things we used to do. So today we'd like to give you an opportunity to give a word of praise. Um, just remember the words, brief, biblical, and beneficial. So don't be a bore. And don't tell us what you've done for the last year while you were in your basement, okay? Um, let's just, if you have a word of praise or joy, um, raise your hand and we will pass you a mic and you can share with us. Yes, Sue, right there, Sue Munn. I would like to thank everyone in this congregation for the graciousness that they showed me during John's sickness and his passing. There's no way that I can say thank you or describe how it touched my heart, and I thank you. Amen, amen. And then right after that, your uh, incident, oh my gosh, it's great to see you, and our prayers are still with you. Someone else? Yes, right over there. Jane, there's a mic coming right behind you. <clears throat> like so many of you that have gone through this last year, I have a lot to praise the Lord for. First of all, I don't know how many of you knew that I could have almost lost my son. He came very close to death, and God worked that all out. But through it all, I'm sure it's brought us all through different things. We could all tell a different story. But when it comes right down to the bottom of it, when we start evaluating what has this year been about, I'm sure we've all come to realize our priorities maybe have to change and that God does have a plan for that and for the future and also in the future when we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months that we still it boils down to letting the Lord work in our lives as individuals and as a church and to get our priorities straightened out and I just want to thank him for bringing us all through this last year amen 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 another word of praise another word of praise in the choir? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, could we have a mic? <laughs> Usherettes are doing a great job. I surprised them with this, so. Just so, a quick thank you to thank everybody that has um, been helping with me, with Terry getting better. He's so much better, though stubborn with the water drinking but doing better, and with me, and a quick shout out to Rosemary for her prayer group, thank you, thank you, thank you, and Nancy for driving, picking me up, and taking me, you are a lifesaver, thank you. Amen, great, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Someone else, yes, how about this lady right here? No, a little further back, waving her hand. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for their prayers and for the cards um, and just to give some glory to God for the healing that I've had. It was a difficult recovery, um, a lot more painful than what anybody um, led me to believe or the doctors understood. But God was with me through every single step. He opened doors for the surgeon, the, the actual day of recovery of surgery and one of the things that I learned while I was laying there in so much pain was that not only did God create us and form us in our mother's womb but he also puts us back together when we are amen. broken amen 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 thank you good to see you all back someone else yes Donald I just like to say thank you for to everyone for the cards and prayers uh I broke my ankle on December 2nd. I went from a wheelchair to a walker. Now I'm doing a cane, and hopefully next Sunday that'll be going. Thank you. Good, great, great. Joan and Joan. Oh, I also want to thank everyone for their cards and their prayers. I can't believe how miraculously God has worked in my knee replacement. I mean, I am just doing... So fantastic, and I just thank God. Amen, amen, amen. 
Anybody else want to share? You said oh. you wanted it? No. Yes. Who? Oh, George. There you go. Uh, uh, I just want to give thanks to uh, the church family uh, for all their support. Um, over the past month, it's been a, a bit of a challenge, but I'm adjusting well. I know God has my back, so that's all working out really well. Um, thus far, as far as seeing, he said no, or he might say not yet. I don't know which it is, but he's getting me through this piece here. I appreciate the calls, the texts, uh, the cards. Uh, it's great to have such a loving family, and I'm proud to be able to say I'm a member of it. Thank you. Amen. Great. great. Someone else? Anybody else? Yes, right here on the front row. Back, and I want to thank this body, um, the church body. I know you were praying for us. It was not easy working out there on the front line at Pickering, back and forth, but I want to give God the glory that not a single resident caught COVID. I know it was due to your prayer. I know you are lifting us up in prayer. Thank you so much. God Amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Anyone else? I know you don't want to hear from me, but I'm getting my whole body fixed, you know. By the fall, I'd like to be fixed. And uh, so uh, I had my two-year um, hearing test. And so, you know, it's really hard to have an audiometer test and uh, uh, the tester is wearing a mask and she had her, uh, an Asian accent so I can't hear anything period let alone put all that together so anyway I did poorly on the test and they just said I'm slowly to well I didn't say slowly I'm my hearing's going down worse especially in this year so I said, so what do you want me to do? And, you know, hearing aids are expensive and um, they don't do the total job. So he said, um, just tap the person on the shoulder so that you're near so when they talk to you, um, they look at you. Um, and so if I come up and tap you on the shoulder, that means you're to start talking and looking in my face as you talk. Um, because I said this, uh, the mass thing has really, if you have a hearing problem, has really made it very difficult to communicate. And I'm afraid you're going to say something that's horrible and I'm going to agree with it and tell you how wonderful it is. So if I say anything wrong like that, please, please let me know. And then in two weeks, I get my scope down here every my two years. So I'm, I'm getting fixed up. So I think I'll be fine. I've had some out of pain in my shoulder. But this week I went and the therapist said my strength and my mobility, even though I have this extra pain, um, I'm above most people, which was the first really great news I got. She said, you're stronger and your mobility is better than the average. But every once in a while I get jolts of pain. So anyway, that's my, my scoop. So anybody else want to share? Just thank you for your love and your prayers. We have anybody visiting today for the first time, maybe never been here before? Yes, on the front row, I want to introduce it. Well, I don't. Um, this is John Faulkner visiting with us. And I first met John um, when he was in my youth group at Washington Crossing Methodist Church. Probably what, were you in seventh grade, eighth grade? Sixth grade. Now, this is pitiful news. And uh, you're married, have children. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I, uh, I have known Pastor Norm for a long time. That is true. I won't say how long, but Good. a long time. Um, and, and he did start out as, uh, you know, our pastor, and he was our youth pastor back then as well. Um, and a uh, lot of... Uh, my spiritual development, I can say, is because of the Lord working through you. Oh, thanks. You've, you've been a real Thank influence you. in my life. And uh, like you said, you know, married and kids and all that, unfortunately, they couldn't make it today. Maybe next time. But okay. uh, 
but that has been passed to them. And uh, I just think you've been a real great influence in my spiritual journey. And I thank you for that. Thanks, John. And John was always one of the, um, the fun kids in the youth group. And so we had some good times in the youth group. Um, anybody else here today for the first time? Okay, so now I'm going to say you're going to stand up and greet each other. You can wave. You can do what you feel comfortable with without offending anybody around you, okay? That's not what you want to do is offend anybody. Okay, let's stand and greet each other. <laughs> and I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my God. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> you, the glory of my King. One more time. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We ask that you sign the ritual of Christian friendship, the pad that the ushers have distributed at this time. I do want to read um, another thank you note. We got, uh, you know, as I told you last week, we tithe your giving and send it to missionaries. So this year I'm going to try to make more of an effort to keep you up to date. Last week we looked at Neilio, um, and even during the difficult times we continue to support our missionaries. And um, so this is a thank you note from Keswick because we send them an annual a donation a couple times throughout the year. Uh, dear friends, thank you for your very generous gift. I want you to know how much we appreciate your service and love for the Lord's work through his ministry at America's Keswick. It is because of you and your giving that we're able to do what we do. I want to tell you, lives have been changed in the name of Jesus. We're grateful that we can count on you. Living in the light of Christ, uh, David Harris, he's the Partner Care Associate, Church and Community Relations. So I'll put this on the bulletin board and you, and you can read it, but know that some of your weekly giving goes to be a part of the Keswick organization, Keswick. Um, just like to highlight a few um, activities for you. You can see um, the calendar for the week. The office is open every day. The men's Zoom prayer and Bible study on Tuesdays. Please uh, note that. Uh, please note choir rehearsal. If you'd like to start singing in the choir, Get ready for events coming up. Uh, that would be great. That's uh, Thursday night. Um, I do want to remind you, during uh, this uh, pandemic season, of course, we've had um, people go to be with the Heavenly Father. We really haven't had any losses due to the virus. So that's been a blessing, but it's been difficult when... People have gone to be with Heavenly Father, some of you know, and you can't, at the peak, couldn't really have a gathering, have a service. So we've we've been starting to do that. Um, you remember last week, or week before last, we celebrated Lil Smith, and we celebrated her life here. Uh, this Thursday morning, we're going to celebrate um, the life of uh, George Field, and so... George started coming to our church only probably the last two years, maybe a little bit more of his life, and uh, came. I, I believe the, the Burrs invited him. We're friends of the Burrs, and he came, and uh, I'll just say this, and I think it's fine to say this. He really wasn't much of a believer when he came to church. This was all new to him, even though he was later in life. And over that two-year period, um, he, he became a believer. 
And I know he did used to go to Florida uh, for some weeks every year. And he greeted me at the door the one Sunday we were standing there. And he said, Pastor Norm, I'm going to Florida now for a few weeks. This is the first time when I'm going to Florida and staying there that I'll be looking for a church to attend on Sunday. So uh, we're celebrating his life. Uh, 9 to 10 Thursday morning is calling hours with the family, with his children, and then 10 o'clock service. So you're all invited to be a part of it. Plus, uh, George, George was faithful at working at the live nativity, the Christmases he was here. He loved doing it. He was a wise man and I think maybe a shepherd at one or two, but he just didn't do it like one night. He did it two, three, four nights. He, he became a changed person and we know where he is. Uh, so we want to celebrate his life uh, then this Thursday. Um, so please note that. Note the other announcements. Um, we're slowly getting more. Um, next weekend, we're uh, celebrating Memorial Day weekend. So, um, of course, we'll have worship service. Um, and um, following the worship service, we're going to have a stand-up picnic outside. So this is not tables and chairs. This is stand-up hot dogs and all this junk food that you like to eat. Uh, so that will be right outside. Um, and so we extend an invitation to you to come casually dressed especially um, if s some of you uh, don't come as casual. Uh, so you might want to come casual because it's like an outside festive thing. Um, so you're welcome to be a part of that and bring any neighbors and friends, but uh, we'll, we'll celebrate Memorial Day. I, this is my opinion. <clears throat> it's real important that we carry on many of the important traditions of our country. And uh, when uh, men and women have given their lives so that you and I can be here today, I don't think we can forget those celebrations. So we hope you come next week and, and be a part of that. John, we hope you come back. <laughs> anyway, did we cover everything? Then at this time, we have the privilege of presenting unto the Heavenly Father his tithes and your offerings. Our Father and our God, thank you for the joy of giving. And we pray now that you bless these tithes and offerings. Bless the giver alike. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here be. <coughs> Holy Ghost, Alleluia, Alleluia. <coughs> Amen. You may be seated.
Maybe I could say this, that um, it, it, it's been a difficult year, year and a few months now, uh, but um, I'm particularly very grateful for our music program that kept going Sunday after Sunday after Sunday so you can be blessed. Um, really thankful for everyone in that back corner there um, that um, when the church was first shut down, um, we were told uh, a sun Saturday morning that we could not meet that next day. And so we didn't do any tech technical things such as live streaming took us two weeks to get it going had some glitches in the beginning but um, uh, now we're live streaming as well well as coming back and uh, everybody was so helpful with taking temperatures and things that it, although it's been a tough experience it's still been a good one a good one when you look back and so we'll just keep on keeping on, but uh, plug back into your ministries, um, and those that are home, well, we know we'll see you back here in a matter of no time, and so it has been good. Um, amen, amen. Uh, <clears throat> Did uh, you ever have a friend that got a product or bought something new and were trying to sell you on the product? Like they got it and it was so wonderful to them and they wanted you, um, they wanted you to, to get it for your own self. Well, so what's one of the first things you think of? Like you might think of, oh, I wish my friend would go away. Uh, but besides that, you might want to think of, well, does this product really work? You know, okay, your soul, your friend sold on this product. Does this product work? Is it simple? Is it complicated? Um, is it something that I would want to, to buy or install in my house or, or just purchase the object to use? Um, and then my concern would be if it works for me and if I can get it to work for me and if it's simple, um, that would be great. Um, I found out today, though, that nothing's simple. I can buy a pack of batteries, and it takes me 10 minutes just to pull that plastic apart, and then I have to get a hacksaw and a hacksaw. Nothing simple. Uh, the other day, I had to change the time on my uh, my little t desk calculator. Well, it's this big, and it has the calendar and time. And, uh, oh, my gosh. You needed a doctorate in time changing. So I, fortunately, I saved the paper, the instructions. When they folded out, it was that big, and it was in 15 different languages, and the print was this small. So I finally flared all the English. So the next time I have to do this, I can go right to it. And I was shocked that, you know, um, that I got it to work, of course. Every time I put the time in, then by the time I saved it, I was five minutes uh, slow. Uh, but, you know, if you have something and it really, really works for you, and it's really something really very good, and if you love me or a friend, I would think that you would want them to have it also. And, you know, so it is with our faith. You know, so it is with spiritual things in our life. We have them. We would certainly want other people that we love to have them. So it is with church, going to church and being part of a, a body of believers. So it is with your basic faith. You've got it. You've found it. And I would think that all of us would then want someone else to have this that we found and we have. Um, well, um, Christians are funny, aren't they? Church people are sort of a little humorous most of the time, but it's funny how, um, we want to have the abundant life. 
We want to have that carefree Christian life. We want to have the joy of our salvation. And we'll buy every book under the sun. We'll listen to every tape. We watch all the TV preachers trying to get the best out of this whole Christian experience. Um, and yet, it seems that so many of us just have a real dull religion, don't we? You know, uh, our religion is just sort of so often dull. It seems to be lacking something. But people today, Christians today, are in need of an intimacy and an inspiration and impelling power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to make our Christian walk wonderful. And those of you that have that walk, you should want to tell your friends and the people that you love and the people that you don't love um, because <clears throat> this whole thing works. It just works. Uh, the last couple months, <clears throat> excuse me, um, We've looked at the resurrection of Christ from the dead on Easter, remember? And then we looked at the post-resurrection appearances. We looked at about five or six of them, from the ladies in the tomb, you remember that, to the road to Emmaus, you remember that, um, to um, the fishermen fishing and Jesus meeting them for breakfast. Um, we, we looked at those post-resurrection appearances. The other week, we looked at the fact that um, <clears throat> Jesus told his disciples what? You shall be my witnesses unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Go into the world. Go into Jerusalem. Go into the world. You will be my witnesses. Then last week, uh, we looked at um, Jesus talking to his followers. And then what happened? He ascended into heaven. And what did his followers do that were at that scene? What were they doing? Okay, let's do this. He ascended into heaven. Where are you going to look? Okay, everybody looking up, looking up. He ascended into heaven, looking up. And the angels appeared and said, what are you doing gazing up? What are you doing here? There's a task to be done. There's a mission to be done. And so... You need to go out into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but remember there was one, one little glitch. They were told to remain in Jerusalem because there was a gift waiting for them. Do you remember this? Are we all up on this or was I the only one in church these Sundays? Okay, you with me? <laughs> You with me? So we're right up to um, the 50th day, Pentecost, Jewish holiday. city was crowded. And we're right there where the gift is going to come to the disciples. So the scriptures tell us they were all gathered together. The city was crowded. And something began to happen. What happened? A great wind came. The wind started coming. Nothing like a, a good old wind, is there? The wind, nice breeze, started coming. Nice breeze started coming. I imagine there was some noise with that breeze coming through the sanctuary. Nice breeze. Suddenly, not only the breeze, which a wind to the Hebrew people represented the spirit of God. Then what happened? Then suddenly, among the heads of the believers, what? Fire, flame coming above their heads. Pretty freaky. It's like one of those... For you 60 people, LSD flashbacks almost, okay? The fire came upon their heads, and then what happened? The flames, fire's coming, the wind is blowing, they're all gathered there, and what happened? All the believers began to speak in all the languages of all the different people that we went through this reading, uh, that were gathered in that place, and 
everyone heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's sort of cool. And they spoke languages, we call this glossolalia, or speaking in tongues, that they didn't even know what they were saying. But the Spirit gave them utterance so that no one was left out. Everybody heard this, this gospel news. Because what happened? The Holy Spirit descended in his power and his might in such a powerful way. Now, the Holy Spirit always was from the beginning of creation. We know that. The Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But this was a time when the Spirit now came in his fullness. Jesus had resurrected and ascended. And now the Spirit of God had to come and move in a powerful way. And so we look at the Spirit falling on the people. Um, the Greek word for spirit is uh, for power. The power of the Spirit is dunamis. And from that we get dynamic, dynamo, dynamite. And so this power of God came upon the people there and they began proclaiming the gospel message. Wouldn't it be good if it happened right now? Wouldn't that be good? All of you that, and me, you know. Today was one of those days I was a little tired. So I, uh, I thought, oh, I have to go to church. No, Sunday morning I get up at four. So I have to go to church, I have to be alive. <laughs> and I thought, I'm really tired today, you know. The power of God fell upon these believers. And you know what? They were, became dynamic. They became dynamos. They were like dynamite. And what did they do? All they did was share the gospel. And everybody heard the gospel. And the wind was going, the flames were going, and it was the day of Pentecost. It was what we call the birthday of the Christian church. It was a glorious time. And you know, what then happened? We see the wind, we see the fire, we hear the tongues, and the Spirit of God moved in a powerful, powerful way. Um, and his people were filled with the Spirit of God. Now, there's all different theologies about the Spirit of God. You know, um, I come from a this background, and John Wesley just always felt that every baby, every being has a bit of the Spirit of God within them. Because it's that spirit of God that convicts us of our sin. It's that spirit of God that speaks to us from our inside before we become a believer. Then when we become a believer, the power of the spirit of God really comes into our life in a fuller way. And then um, some people believe in the second work of grace where they're totally sanctified and the spirit then absolutely takes over. But when the Spirit of God, let's at least get some common ground, comes into our hearts and lives, um, we do also see in Ephesians where Paul tells us not to be drunk with wine but to be filled with the Spirit. It's a continual filling. It's a continual filling. I, I'm a believer. Uh, the Spirit of God convicted me. I've accepted Christ. I have God's Spirit in my life. Um, but then there's a continually filling, and, and, and you've all probably experienced that, because, you know, let's face it, um, some things just get a leak sometimes. And you know, you're filled with the Spirit, you're ready to go, you're doing great, and suddenly, two weeks later, maybe you're in the pits again. So, guess what? This is what I do, quite frequently. I have to have a meeting with God. And I have to say, God, I think I sprung a leak. I sprung a leak. Because <clears throat> I 
I'm not as thrilled about my faith as maybe I should be. Not as happy about it. I think I've sprung a leak. So God, fill me anew. Fill me afresh. And we Christians should be people who are filled afresh and overflowing with the Spirit of God. Now, this is good preacher talk. You should go home and say, hey, he was sort of right on. Maybe you'll go home and say, oh, I disagree with this or that, but this is good preacher talk, you know, because to put it into personal practice is sometimes very, very difficult. You know, someone comes up to you and says something awful. Um, do you feel overwhelmed by the loving spirit of God all the time when they say that to you? Do you, <laughs> do you feel overwhelmed by the loving power and spirit of God when someone cuts in line in front of you at the giant? <laughs> no, you don't. You want to take your grocery cart and ram them, don't you? Of course you do. Do you feel with the loving, empowered spirit of God? No, we don't feel all the time. Sometimes I honestly believe we leak a little. Then we come to grips with it, and we move on. And we want to say to God, God, I remember that day of Pentecost. That Holy Spirit came down, and he's come down on me before, and he's filled my heart overflowing and filled me with power. And that's what I want. I want that every day of my life. You know, um, I believe this to be true. Just listen. It's impossible to live the Christian life as we should without being filled with the Spirit of God. I, I believe it is impossible without being filled with the Spirit of God. We don't do the living. The Spirit of God does that living within us. It's impossible to serve the Lord as we should without being filled with the Spirit of God. Forgiveness of sins qualifies us for heaven. We're heaven-bound, right? Um, but the baptism of the Spirit of God on our hearts and our lives fits us for life on earth. So because of our beliefs, we know where we're going. But the spirit of God, it's that spirit that overpowers us and helps us to live this Christian life. And this Christian life is hard to live. I really believe that. But we see in scriptures from Paul and on from, is that we're not to be filled with wine, but we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God. But I think being filled with the Spirit of God is maybe a little similar, but yet differently, to being drunk, don't you? Now, I've never been drunk my entire life. I've never, I don't drink. I never have. I've sipped beer once, and for all you beer drinkers... It is the most disgusting taste I've ever had in my entire life. I've been to a couple um, wedding receptions where um, the, wine, the, the punch bowl tasted a little funny. Um, and I didn't know that what I was drinking until uh, I think this is a funny taste. So I have had um, some experience, but very, very little. My, uh, many of my relatives were drinkers. My great, great aunts, great uncles, they were drinkers. And of course, we always got together for celebrations, but especially my one uncle, he, he wasn't a happy drunk. He, you know how some are happy drunks and some are miserable drunks? Well, he was a miserable drunk. So he, he worked every day during the week, but the weekends he drank the whole weekend. And so every time we'd have a get party get together, he'd ruin the party because he'd do something stupid or whatever. My one great aunt was great when she drank. Uh, she was very heavily overweight. New Year's Eve, she'd come sliding down the banister, you know, and uh, my other great aunt, she'd, I remember the one year she fell in the front door and put her cigarette, the lid in first after it fell out of her mouth. And I'd just look at my parents and say, we're related to these people? <laughs> these are people that... <laughs> Outside of my parents being good people before they became Christians, you know, 
my, my grandmother always, she wasn't the real strong praying type. She would sit in the chair all day with her bottle of beer and her cigarette. And, you know, this was their lives. And we had a milkman. They had a beer man. Walk right through the house, say beer man, bring a new case every week. I'm like, this is, the Bible says we shouldn't be drunk with wine but we should be drunk with the spirit. And you know, when, when we do get drunk with alcohol, it does something to us. It, it sort of controls every part of our body. It controls every part of our thinking. It controls every, every um, our perception. When you're drunk with the spirit of God, when you're filled with the spirit of God, that too controls every part of your body. Your thoughts, your dreams, how you react, how you feel, Letting the Spirit of God totally control us with power. And so, as we think of Pentecost, we think of this power that God said he would send in the name of his Spirit, give you the power. And so, what happens when we're filled with the Spirit of God? What happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we say, come into my life, come into my heart, take Every part of my being, what happens? It does a few things. I want to tell you a few things. It does, and you, you'll have more. Number one, it's, it's a changing power that comes to our hearts and our lives. When the Spirit of God comes into us in a powerful, full way, it changes us. It, cha- it makes us different people, doesn't it? It sure does. Look at that day of Pentecost. Look at Peter. Um, You remember Peter uh, not too long ago um, denied Christ. You remember the woman um, around the fire the night of Jesus' trial? And she says, I know you. I know you. You were were with him, that man. And Peter's going, no, I wasn't. And then she says, yes, I do. I know you. You have that Galilean accent. I know you. You were with that man they called Jesus. Peter said, no, no. No, I wasn't. Third time, I know you. Yes, 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 you were with him. And Peter's getting mad now, denying it. No, I wasn't with him. Well, about 53 days later, Peter gets up before the crowd because, see, Pentecost had come and empowered him and filled his life. And you know what he gets up and says? Well, you fellow Jewish people, listen to me. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God. He did miracles. You killed him. You killed him, but you know what? He was put to death because you nailed him on the cross. But you know what? God raised him from the dead, freed him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. Just say those words to yourself. It was impossible for death to keep his hold on Jesus. So Peter starts preaching. 52 days prior, he's denying that he even knew this man. Now he's saying, let me tell you who he is. Because Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit filled his life. And he preached and he preached. And the scriptures tell us, 3,000 people got saved that day. That's pretty powerful. I'd be thrilled if I had 3,000 people in church. I'd be thrilled if I had um, 300 people in church. Imagine giving an altar call and 3,000 people coming forward. And this was the guy that denied Christ not too many weeks past. Oh, my gosh. You know what happened? Pentecost. Pentecost came and filled this believer with the power of God. Pentecost came. You know, not only Peter changed. How about, um, do we also know someone else who was filled with the power of God and changed drastically? Um, how about um, how about Paul? You know? How about Paul? The spirit came to his life. He was Saul, changed him to Paul, was on the road to Damascus. And um, I remember standing 
up there in the Golan Heights, you could see the road to Damascus. I wouldn't go standing there today, but you could see that road to Damascus. And where G Paul saw, met Jesus Christ, was touched, was filled, and he went from being the greatest missionary, the greatest author of the Bible, and prior to that point, he was willing to kill believers because he had. What happened? What happened? He had a Pentecostal experience where God changed his life. Well, the Holy Spirit comes to our lives not only in a changing way, but it also comes with a compassionate power. You know, when the Spirit of God touches us, we become people of great passion compassion great great love don't we don't we um suddenly have to look at people through the eyes of christ we do we do we need to look at people through the eyes of christ when people are in need or in help we need to reach out to them we need to be people of compassion and and you know it that's hard sometimes because you know some people just aren't real lovable people, are they? You know, you think you should help somebody, but they just get on your nerves. You're like, man, I really don't want to do this. But I'm thankful when God looked down at me. He looked down at me, not with judgment so much, but with compassion and with love, and that he cared for me so very much. And when we become, when we become people who Pentecost has touched the spirit of God, shouldn't we be compassionate, loving people? Oh yeah, we should. There is absolutely no question about it. Is it some days hard? Oh yes, it is. I just, I can't get over. This is one, you know, I have no life, basically. You know, I live three minutes down the road, and I come to church. I go down the road, and I go to a local restaurant at least twice a day. Um, and so, um, but sometimes things just get on my nerves. I just, I, I remember thinking, if I ever moved again, Number one, the first thing I would ask about the neighborhood is do train tracks run through the neighborhood? Because I get every train that passes wherever I'm going, I have to stop. And then the freight trains come. And, you know, they do this slow move, and then they back up. It is horrible. And that's on top of the traffic. I was out yesterday. Do you know how bad traffic was yesterday? Everywhere I went was traffic and the, and the bad timing of the lights. So when, when I'm going throughout the day, I'm sometimes like not real compassionate. You know, I don't know whether you ever saw that movie, Fried Green Tomatoes, when the gal had the little uh, Volkswagen and she wanted to run into those teenage girls that took her parking spot. And she said, I'm older than you and I have more car insurance than you. You know, well, uh, sometimes I feel that way. Sometimes I'm not that compassionate. And then sometimes, you know, I deal with people and, you know, they just talk and talk and talk and talk. And technically I'm paid to listen, to listen, to listen. And then I start doing my Christmas shopping list in my mind while they're talking and talking and talking. When the Spirit of God touches our lives, we need to be people that have that power that's compassionate. It's compassionate. You need to look at any, everybody, anybody in this room. You should feel so much Christian love toward and kindness that you would do anything for anybody in this room. If you won't, there might be a problem. There might be a problem. And then when that power comes on Pentecost, 
It's a continuing, ongoing power, overcoming power that, that ultimately doesn't stop. When I feel like I have a leak, I say, okay, God, okay, come on. We got to get on. We got to get back in step, and we have to go. And there's nothing. Now, I know this is a preacher talk again. There's nothing that you can't overcome with the Spirit of God. And I know that's hard because I know there's difficult between drugs and this and this and this, but there's nothing you can't overcome with God's spirit. You know, I guess what I'm saying is today, maybe we ought to can the dull religion. You know, you've all got a garbage can, don't you, at home? Well, if you walk through your garage or whatever, when you walk in the house today, Dump the dull religion. Lift the kit, lid up, dump it. Say, I'm tired of this dull religion. I want to be a Christian that's filled with the Spirit of God and lives that way so people see that in me. Um, <clears throat> remember your assignment this week was to present the gospel to somebody. Um, and so I had a very unique opportunity that I... I know we'll d develop um, one of my neighbors in my neighborhood. Um, he always does his house so nice with decoration. He goes the second mile to make his property beautiful. And, and uh, so uh, he was out doing it Sunday, and I drove by, and um, I, I hung, blew the horn. And um, he just stopped to tell me that after years, his, his wife was having a baby. After, it might have been seven years or something. And, but she had a little rough time. Now, I have advantage over things than some of you. And uh, I never talked to him about what I do for a living or anything. And he said, uh, um, uh, we were going to look you up um, and come after you because we needed some prayer. And uh, he goes, I don't know what your parish is, um, but we needed some prayer. And uh, so we talked, and I said, I'll, I'll give, I'm going to give him my number and some things about ch church. And um, I was, like, so blessed to think, you know, how gossip of bad things always spreads, that someone actually spread the news that, Hey, that guy that passes your house every day is a, a pastor or Christian or whatever. And uh, that's the type of people and reputation we need to have, isn't it? Where the whole neighborhood might know, hey, they go to church, they believe. Or the whole neighborhood that's maybe theologically in touch might say, Pentecost touched their heart. Pentecost touched us. Pentecost. So you say, well, um, you know, so Holy Spirit thing is uh, we need a fresh touch of God's Spirit in each one of our lives personally. We're so um, inundated in our lives today with a mild form of Christianity. We need to get the full dose so often. So I did go on the computer. I thought this was cool that I'd share it with you. This was uh, from Charisma Magazine, okay? This is, you might say, well, what do, I need, what do I need Pentecost for? What do I need this fresh touch? What do I need this filling of God's spirit in my life? This was 33 things that the Holy Spirit will do for you. I thought, you know, I'd be happy if someone did two nice things for me. Now I've got the Spirit of God that's going to do 33 things for me. So I thought I'd share some of them with you. It might get you excited about God's Spirit in your life. And there's a scripture with each one, but we don't have time. Okay. 
He helps us, he guides us, he teaches us, he speaks, he reveals to us, he instructs us, he testifies of Jesus, he confronts us, he calls us, he fills us, he strengthens us, he prays for us, he prophesies through us, he bears witness to the truth, he brings joy, he brings freedom to us, he helps to obey, he calls for Jesus' return, he transforms us, he lives in us, he frees us, he renews us, he produces fruit in us, he gives gifts, he leads us, he convicts us, he sanctifies us, he empowers us, he unites us. He seals us. He gives us access to the Father. He enables us to wait. He casts out demons. That's what the Spirit of God can do for you. And that's what happens at Pentecost when the power of the Spirit of God comes into our life and changes us and makes us new and wonderful people. Today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the Christian church. Do we want a dull religion? can the dull religion let the spirit of god come to you in his power and his might touch you fill you anew and afresh and do wonderful things in your life you know um i've been a christian a good many years haven't been the best all the time have my ups and downs gotten ticked at god sometimes and uh, i have news for you i think he got a little ticked at me sometimes also but he's such a forgiving and wonderful God. And the spirit dwells within our lives. And if you've leaked out, plug the leak and get back into it. It's Pentecost. And uh, walk with him and you'd be surprised what God's spirit will do for you in your life. Amen. And amen. And amen. While we sing, if you want to come and kneel and pray and recommit your life, feel free to do that. There's a sweet, sweet.
music, read the words, and while they're playing the last verse, if you feel God is speaking to you, you'd like to recommit your life, if you'd like to give your life to Christ for the first time, you need to come and, and pray and to kneel. And uh, so the invitation is given. May this really be a Pentecost in your life, a true Pentecost. So just listen as we play. We'll join in on the chorus. So as we leave this place today, we should be able to say that we have been revived. God has touched our hearts and that we're leaving this place more committed than when we came in. Today it's the day of Pentecost. It's a movement that started, that is alive and well to this very moment in this place and around the world. And be proud that you're part of that movement where you're a believer and God's spirit dwells within you. Go with the joy and that excitement. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.